Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Clement Consultancy Education Series. So in this episode 17, I'm going to touch on equity term loan to purchase the second property. Okay, in short ETL. So what is ETL? Let's dive deep in. Alright, so I'm going to explain what is called equity term loan and how to create capital from the first property as the down payment for the second property using our 5 years plan. Okay, so I'd like to reiterate the three stages of property ownership again. Most of them than not, most of us actually start off in the initial, initial stage and we slowly progress to the growth stage and lastly the use stage where regardless of our current age, right, there'll be one day that we will expect to be retired from the workforce. Okay, so why is it important to build up this capital along the, the whole journey? Alright, so as mentioned previously, um, the previous episode I actually touched on, on initial stage and growth stage. So today we will cover more on the use stage. So what is use stage? Use stage I denote as holding multiple properties. Okay, for the purpose of collecting passive income, some actually switch property every three years, like some of my clients did. And of course, people also purchase freehold as legacy planning for their future generation. Okay, uh, as usual, the, the common obstacles face is um, scared to lose money, the need for huge capital upfront, don't know whether to buy resale for rental income or to buy new launch for capital gain, and uh, so on and so forth. And the list goes on and on, all right? Yeah, so as usual, I'm going to throw in a case study, and uh, this case study is equity, equity term loan. Okay, Watermark at Robertson 2 bedroom unit was purchased in 2007 at 1.4 million. So during the market changes, right, in 2009, right, this property actually tanked from 1006 to 900 PSF. So luckily, client did not sell because why uh, property, there's actually ups and downs in the market, okay? And uh, based on based on this as a, as a case study, right, I like to use this to do the equity term loan. So purchase at 1.4 million, outstanding loan 950, this client do not use any CPF usage. And today's valuation is actually at $1.9 million. So in this peer period, right, there's actually a 500k increase where the valuation goes higher than the purchase price. Okay, so uh, over here, the question is, without selling, can they cash out any money? Okay, so I'm going to show you the example of equity term loan. Okay, so before we start, I'd like to emphasize that the equity term loan formula is actually 75% of the new valuation minus CPF usage and minus outstanding loan. So over here, new valuation is 1.9 million, CPF usage is zero, outstanding loan is 950k, and that gives you 475k in total for equity term loan. Term loan. So I'd like to also emphasize that banks usually give equity term loan beyond 100,000. So if this formula work out to be below 100k, Please speak to your banker or myself, then we will actually find a solution for you. Okay, of course, there are some guidelines and benchmarks for equity term loan. Number one, the maximum equity term loan must be minimum at 100,000. Okay, and second thing, this ATL is also subject to TDSR compliance, which is currently at 55%. All right, yeah, so next I'm going to throw in my, my proposal for the fires plan. So before we actually want to proceed this forward, right, this client of mine, Alan and Karen, actually wants to have a, wants to build their second property, but they are scared of uh, using um, so-called uh, paying additional buyer stamp duty. So before we proceed, right, I actually tell them what's your plan. So they are actually telling me they want to use property as a rental income to collect passive income. And there and that's where we actually sit down and firm up and I identify a resale two bedroom Caspian that the wife will purchase solely. Okay, so this Caspian is nine three six square feet, value at one point one six million, rented at three thousand six hundred dollars per month. So this is buying with tenancy. Yeah, so buying resale properties, right, when you have a, a so-called proposal or, or an idea to move forward to collect as a passive income, right, I will actually dive deep in to find you what is the current property that is worthwhile to buy. So in this case, it's a two-bedroom Caspian unit that will be purchased under Karen's name. All right, so after owning it for five years, how much can Karen get back? Huh? So purchase price, $1.16 million. There will be a 5% down payment and 20% uh, so-called down payment as well. So total plus stamp duty is another thirty one thousand. Total adds up to be three hundred twenty one thousand dollars. Okay, three hundred twenty one thousand dollars. Ah, so assuming rent rental received at three thousand six, monthly principal is one six two five, monthly interest one eight one three, and that also gives the monthly passive income at one six two. And if we were to sum this together, 
we will have an accumulative 103,000 in principal income and a accumulative 9747 in passive income. So uh, this property has also gone through capital appreciation for the five years and I found that this pro property actually appreciated by a further 174,000. So when we add these three together, ABC, this gives us a capital gain of 577491. Okay, let's look into details. So how does ETL works? Okay, so basically this starts off with the ETL amount from Allen, 475K. Subsequently, he used this property to form the down payment 321,000 for Karen's property. Okay, yeah. So after that, because this property is used for rental, we will actually accumulate another 103,000 from rental under the principal income. And after minusing off the interest, we will actually have a very small passive income as well from these five years. And when I did a, a five-year plan check for them, right, I also found that this property appreciated by another further $174,000. So this actually satisfies the three Ps that I explained in the previous two episodes. How the three Ps are, if you remember, and you have been following my video. Principal income, passive income, and profit. Okay, so let's work it out together. So with this down payment 321000 settled, and having a forced savings of this amount and a passive income plus capital appreciation, right? These three figures add up to a total cash take back of 577491. Five, okay, so immediately after Karen buy this property and sell off after five years, plan, right? She would have accumulated a further half a million dollars from this property alone. Okay, and, and yeah, so this is what I just explained over here. Karen had just gained 577491 in five years time from one property solely. She purchased this for the purpose of rental income and I actually worked it out for her and also found that there's capital appreciation and that is why I proposed for her to let go and, and, and move on to the next five years plan that I created for her. So ultimately, both Allen's and Karen's five years plan right, consists of this original purchase where it's the down payment for Karen's property. <clears throat> okay, so estimated return from ETL from Allen's property is 475 plus a total cash savings of 577491. So when I add these two up together, right, this gives a whopping number of 1.052 in five years' time from the sales of Karen's property. And bear in mind that they still have a roof over their head. Allen still gets to stay in the property along with Karen, while Karen's name is free up to purchase the second property using ETL and taking my fire's plan to realize this half a million dollars gain. So the golden question comes again, is property ownership an investment or savings? And I would like to stress again, property ownership is actually more of a savings. So ask yourself this, how can one save so much money within this five years time? And this is one of my client's um, proposal and, and profile that I'm going to present to you. And I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Okay, so if there's anything you you like to inquire, please feel free to drop your comment below in my YouTube video or like and share if you think this video is useful. Alright, and hope to see you soon in my next video. Take care.